Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. Today we read 2 Thessalonians. And 2 Thessalonians was written shortly after 1 Thessalonians. And here Paul is trying to straighten up some uh, issues that the church had. Uh, one with uh, the idea of the resurrection. Uh, some were teaching that the resurrection had already occurred. Paul wanted to uh, be real clear that it had not happened yet, but uh, that there were some things that were going to take place first. And then he also gives some correction on uh, some people who were kind of just uh, mooching off of the church. They weren't working for a living. They were just kind of um, taking money from the church. And he, he corrects that. And, and there's some other things, of course, mentioned as well. But what we want to focus on in our devotion today is Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. And as I read this verse, this is what I wish for everybody who listens to the video today. Listen to what he says. He says, Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. The Lord be with you all. I really do wish that for everyone who's watching this video. I really wish that and hope and pray that God will give you a peace and continually give you peace in every circumstance. Um, that's a wonderful blessing to have. And it's something that we all value. I think all of us as humans uh, desire peace. And that's why uh, so much money is spent on vacations, getaways, where you can go to some peaceful place, whether it's on a cruise or it's on uh, some uh, beach somewhere and you can just stay and relax and not have to worry about all the the things that are going on in your life you can just get away and have some peace um, some people build their whole lives around this idea they build their their houses they construct their whole lives uh, in an attempt to get peace and that's typically how the world seeks peace is through outward circumstances you know if I can just get my marriage straight straightened out if I can just get my finances straightened out if I can just uh, figure out a way to deal with that difficult personality at work or uh, you know the list goes on we, we have this these lists we say if I could just you know fix these things in my life then I would have peace within and, and that's how the world tries to create peace it's again it's, it's through the outward circumstances um, but Paul here says that he wishes that God would continually grant them peace in every circumstance. So we, we, we get a clue here that Paul's speaking about something uh, different and a means of acquiring peace in a different way than the world acquires it. In John chapter 14, Jesus talked about peace. In verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart uh, be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So Jesus said, I can give you some peace, but it's not going to be like the peace that the world gives. The world might try to give you peace, again, by these outward things, but I have a different peace that I offer you. And it's a peace that can abide in our hearts in every circumstance. A peace that can carry us through some of the darkest, um, most tumultuous, times in our life just this inward peace within this inward quiet that that God gives us and one one thing we need to recognize is that this is something that God gives and it's something that we need to go to him for many times we try to create it ourselves but we need to understand that he is the God of peace and he is the source of peace and so if we're going to find true peace in every circumstance, we've got to look to him. As Paul was going to pray to him on the behalf of those at Thessalonica, that they would receive peace. We have to recognize that. But there are a couple things that we can do also to um, put us in a better posture to uh, living a life of peace. And I think it basically boils down to two things. That is prayer and surrender. Prayer and surrender. In Philippians chapter 4, you might remember reading this in verse 6, where it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And in verse 7 says this, And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So he connects this peace that, that goes beyond all comprehension. You can't even explain it. How can this person have peace uh, in this particular situation? Well, through prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. Supplication is just a fancy word for, for making requests to God. Um, by praying to God, by by speaking to Him, by sharing your life with Him, casting your burdens upon Him, letting Him know what you're going through and struggling through. Uh, many times you'll find the answer to your problems just by talking it out with the Lord. And and when we talk to Him, it, it puts us in a different mind frame. It puts us in a different mindset. When we just leave our thoughts to our to ourselves, we can go into a lot of dark places. We can begin to conjure up uh, superficial um, scenarios that might happen in the future and, and we begin to get anxious and and begin to wonder about tomorrow and what's going to happen and but if we lay all that aside and just take everything to God and direct our thoughts to him then it gives us a whole different outlook on things and it's it's more than just the fact that we get a different outlook but but it says here that God himself God will give us a peace uh, that surpasses all understand that the peace of God the peace that derives from God and so prayer is is vital but also surrender having this attitude of Lord take my life I surrender it all to you and that's not easy to do especially if you're going through a difficult situation um, to surrender it over to the Lord uh, to you know the as the song goes Jesus take the wheel in other words you take control of it you take control of this situation. Um, Jesus did this. Remember, he he found a time when he was very distressed. Uh, when he was in the garden, in the garden of Gethsemane, the night before he was crucified. Uh, you talk about a person who was uh, emotionally distraught. Uh, he's weeping and, and he's sweating and, and the drops are are dropping like sweats of blood it's bursting the little blood vessels in his skin he, he was sweating so badly and and he's just beside himself and what does he pray well he for one he prays that's that's our first thing but the second thing he does he says nevertheless not my will but your will be done a prayer of surrender he made the request but then he made a, a statement of surrender and he did that three times and after he leaves prayer with those two things, his supplications, but also his surrender, you almost see him really not showing any much anxiety at all. Not that he enjoyed the trials and crucifixions they went through, of course not. But there seemed to have been this inner peace in him as he went through those things. Um, just the fact that he was so silent through it all. And he really never even spoke up unless someone directly asked him a question. And uh, I, I, I think it really had to do with this attitude of surrender. Surrender to his Father's will. And so imagine that. Living a life where you just totally give your life over to him. You know, a lot of times we lose our peace because we're trying to control our lives. And because we're trying to uh, superficially create peace within. And that makes us even more anxious. But if we just give it all to him. Lay it all down at his feet. And say, Lord, I surrender all to you. Whether you lead me through the green pastures, through the delightful uh, days and the, the mountains and the peaks of life. Or if I have to go through the valley of the shadow of death. Whatever I have to go through, Lord, I surrender it all to you. How can you not have peace with that type of attitude? Just giving it all over to him. I know the days that I have lived where I was just surrendering everything to him and I was consciously speaking words of surrender to God throughout the day those have been some of the best days of my life uh, some of the happiest most joyful days of my life um, it, it seems it's counterintuitive but if you do it uh, just just uh, find out for yourself just how much peace you get uh, just from doing that so these are some thoughts about peace hopefully they're helpful to you you know some things you can put to practice remember to to pray to the Lord and then also to surrender your life over to him and see if you don't receive a peace that you you don't even understand yourself um, and certainly other people will not understand as they see you um, 
maintaining this peace. But I do hope that everybody here, everybody listening today, would find that, or that God would grant you continually peace in every circumstances, and that He would be with you. I do thank you guys for watching today. I love you guys. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless.